I think one of the most interesting things about this story as I was reading it is just how different this company is from Facebook. There's this sense that they're the other social network, but there's a, there's, they, they seem to have more uh, different differences than they do similarities. Exactly, and in a way LinkedIn is almost an enterprise software company. It's a data company. They've got 161 member profiles, yours, mine, and a whole lot of other 161 people. million. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And they use those profiles uh, to sell to recruiters or to sales teams that want to find the best possible people or the best sales leads. And that's a very lucrative business. I mean, it's like a Bloomberg terminal, it's like an Equifax credit report, it's like a Dun & Bradstreet database, and they're making good money from that database. Facebook has been very reliant, as we all know, on selling advertising. They're struggling with particularly when on the mobile side to sell advertising. LinkedIn is sort of routed around this problem, in effect. Exactly, and advertising is less than 20% of how LinkedIn makes its money. Uh, Facebook, it's more than 80%. And you pointed out mobile quite rightly, as screens get smaller, that's a problem for anyone selling ads. It's not a problem for LinkedIn. If anything, people are going to use its services more and its data becomes even more valuable. Uh, their line is, we love mobile. The core insight is to get a business where the data is incredibly valuable and where people are contributing it for free, the, the Tom Sawyer model. They're getting someone else to paint their fence. Uh, and so, yeah, and it's, it's a well-run company, uh, but you know, they've had their ups and downs. They had a um, privacy breach where a lot of their passwords got yes. exposed. And when I looked at how they spend their money, sales is a huge part of what they do. It's more than 30% of their spending, which is pretty high even for Silicon Valley where there are a lot of great salespeople. It, one of the interesting things about this, as you suggest, is basically they're collecting all of this data, which we all voluntarily uh, provide happily without any concerns. Uh, before this privacy breach, I don't think there were a lot of discussion about privacy issues on LinkedIn in the same way that we've had them on Facebook. The degree of information is the key insight here. That Facebook, people can put up a great deal of material on their page, pictures of their kids, um, stories about their medical ups and downs, the like. LinkedIn, that doesn't happen. It's basically what you do in the workplace, and people tend to regard that as public. And we hand out business cards all the time and what is the LinkedIn database but a really expanded version of your business card. Mm -hmm. So in fact in the underground market for stolen passwords, a bank password can fetch 60 or 80 dollars. That's pretty valuable. You might get into someone's account. Uh, I think we at Forbes had a, a report that LinkedIn stolen passwords were going to be lucky to fetch a dollar or two. There's just not very far you can go when you know that someone was an assistant sales manager in Chicago 10 years ago.